Hello and welcome to My Bolt EUV. I'm Jim and we're going from point A to point B. But before you climb in, let's plan our trip. I've looked and I've tried to find about as much information as I possibly can about ABRP, which is known as a better route planner, and how it interfaces with the Chevrolet Bolt. I found all that I could and unfortunately, there's not a lot of good stuff out there. And my experience with ABRP early on was not that great, to be honest with you. In fact, you might even say that I actually hated the program. But things change. A few months ago, I bought an OBD2 device for my Bolt so I could do a deep dive into the battery. And if you watched my 30,000 mile video, and I'll put a link below, you'll know that I bought this little device right here. It's the VPeak OBD2 BLE scanner diagnostic tool. And it comes with software, or you can download software, from the software stores for either your Apple or your Android phone. It is also a check engine like code reader. So you can do that if you need to do that for some of your older cars. But after I bought that VPeak device, I learned that ABRP could be used in conjunction with the output of an OBD2 device and I got kind of excited. But I found out that the VPeak is not compatible with uh, ABRP, or at least that's what I thought. At least that's what everything on the internet suggested. And even the uh, ABRP software folks said that this is not recommended. It may not be recommended, but it does work. And today we're going to talk about my experience with ABRP. We're going to talk about how to set up ABRP and your OBD2 port reader. And I'm going to show you how my current setup works with the Bolt EUV. So sit back and relax, and then Climb in and we'll go. Let's take a look. So the first thing we must do is define what ABRP is. It's a better route planner. It is an app designed specifically for electric cars. The app uses real-time information about charging stations and your car's battery status to calculate the most efficient route for a planned trip, no matter how long or short that trip may be. This allows users to plan their drive without worrying about reaching a charging station. The app is available for both Android and iOS. The user configures the app based on several input items, not the least of which is the make and model of the car that they use. In my case, that's the 2023 Bolt UV. If you did nothing else, you would still have a halfway decent trip planning software package. It does a fair job at planning trips based solely on the make and model and the available charging infrastructure along the route. But when you couple that plan along with the live data from your battery system and you have several road trips completed where the app has had a chance to learn your driving habits, you have the stuff you need to keep you from range anxiety. And that's what this is all about. So let us look at the OBD2 device that I bought then we will take you through the steps you need to hook that into your bolt and get you started with ABRP. What is an OBD2 device? OBD stands for Onboard Diagnostic and it is a term referring to a vehicle's self-diagnostic and reporting capability. In the United States, this self-diagnostic is a requirement to comply with federal emission standards to detect failures that may increase the vehicle tailpipe emissions to more than 150% of the standard to which it was originally certified. This system is what got VW in trouble with the EPA and the infamous Dieselgate scandal. In a way, this is what brought Electrify America into existence. But I digress. Let's keep on with the OBD2 thing. A short history. OBD2 or OBD started way back in 1968 and by 1988 had made its way into many car models. That was OBD1. OBD1.5 was used by GM on some car models in 94, 95, and 96. OBD2, the standard that which we use today, was a vast improvement over the earlier versions and it has been the standard on most cars since 1996, almost 30 years. With that in mind, I purchased the VPeak device so I could download an app called Car Scanner and do a deep dive on the battery health for my trip back in January and my 30,000 mile report. It worked great. 
but when I decided to connect it with ABRP, I found out that I had bought the wrong device. At least that's what all the forums said and what even the ABRP support section said. They simply said it's not a recommended OBD2 device. Well, I took everything at face value instead of taking the time to do more research. And guess what? The internet isn't always right. Now is it? The VPEAK OBD2 device is also a BLE device, which BLE stands for Bluetooth Low Energy. And I'll explain why that is important later on in this video. Now, how does that work with the Bolt? So a couple of weeks back, I decided to give it a shot to connect my VPEAK system to the OBD2 port and there, then connect the OBD2 port to ABRP. It works perfectly right out of the gate. Now let's talk about the steps for setting this thing up. First, if you do not have ABRP installed on your phone, Android or iOS, and I use iOS, please do that if you wish to give this a test drive. So when you get to the start screen, when you click the hamburger, that's the three lines in the upper left section of ABRP, your next screen will appear and it'll look something like this. And then if you click your name, like right here in the uh, second picture where it says Gems, you'll be taken to your ABRP profile and that looks like this particular picture. Going back, if you click the car that you've chosen, mine's the Chevrolet Bolt and it's named White Lightning, you can go over here and select a new car if you want to add one. I've already added this one, so I, I'm not going to take you through those steps too far. But if you click your plan settings, you'll be taken to a screen where you can add a new vehicle. On this particular page, once you have your car connected to ABRP, you should use the automatic settings because it will automatically populate your departure state of charge and your reference consumption will be based on your previous driving habits and it's going to take a few days for that to populate. Also for the Bolt EV slash EUV I find that charging stops, the charging stop settings that work the best for me anyway, are few but long and quickest arrival. That's the left two are the second from the left and the center settings. So then if you click the edit settings or live data, you're going to be taken to a screen that shows you your current state of charge, your battery voltage, your power, your battery temperature, your battery capacity. In this case, the Bolt EV EUV battery capacity is incorrect. It's listed as 56.5 kilowatt hours. It's actually 66 kilowatt hours. And I have sent a request to the folks that program ABRP to get that fixed. Again, you're probably going to have to play around with this, but you'll notice that on one of the screenshots I have my car set to automatic settings. Again, this means that ABRP will use the state of charge, the calibrated reference consumption based on my previous drives, and it will update the map with live traffic data and then give you your next destination. On this particular screenshot that I have displayed here for you, you see that my current state of charge is 70% and my reference consumption is 3.57 miles per kilowatt hour. There are many other configuration options that I will not get into during this video, but I'll provide a link to the ABRP website so you can go through their tutorial and owner's manual and it will help you. But I will tell you that there are five charging stop settings that you can choose from ranging from few but long to quickest arrival and to short but many. The Bolt will be optimized based on the select setting that you have chosen and I have chosen the one that is between few but long and the quickest arrival. Now for longer trips I'm going to do few but long because I don't want to be stopping a lot but for trips under 500 miles I'm probably going to stick with the between the few but long and quickest arrival. But wait, there's more. I want to caution everyone here. Even though this is a BLE device, my, my OBD2 port reader is a BLE device, if you don't drive your car regularly, you can drain your 12 volt system with this low energy device. If your battery is old, 
you may still have problems even if you're driving every day so my advice if you're not going to drive your car in the next 72 hours unplug that OBD2 port device and plug it back in before you start your car for the next drive this will reduce your chances of draining your 12 volt battery don't say you haven't been warned this is something that you need to pay very careful attention to I do hope that I've provided some useful information today about ABRP and OBD2 devices and I hope that I've shown you enough that you can set up ABRP and your OBD2 device to work with your car for bolts for sure but for any other car that has an OBD2 port and ABRP installed or at least I've shown you enough for you to experiment in setting things up for your car if you have tips and tricks from your own experiences please leave them in the comments below it's always good to share information and that's what this channel is all about I will be using my ABRP and VPEAK OBD2 unit exclusively on my next trip in May and I will document that step by step leading into the 36,000 and 37,500 mile reports that I'm going to be doing uh, during the month of May so keep your eyes out for that video and I just want to remind you, thanks for stopping by. Please do remember to subscribe, share, comment, and like. And if you want to be notified when I upload something new, just click the notification bell when you subscribe. Remember, treat everyone with kindness, put a smile on your face, help someone today, and pay it forward when someone does the same. Take it easy, everybody. See you real soon.